Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the Jurassic World Primal Attack Ornithalaces. Now, we're finally done with the uh, Dino Rivals line. I know that didn't really take long, but honestly, I don't really have a lot of figures from that line because a lot of them didn't really interest me. Um, you know, out of the ones I have, you know, those are the ones that I particularly wanted. There are some that I do want, and I haven't really gotten them yet, but... I think for right now, um, that's pretty much it for me in terms of like the Dino Rivals line. So, yeah. Anyway, we're moving on to the Primal Attack line. And so far, uh, this line has been average as far as Mattel goes. Uh, their Attack Pack figures, of course, are pretty good. Um, when I talk about the Kalavasaurus, I'll talk more about that. So, yeah. And before I take a look at this figure, um, I want to take a look at something. I know I don't really do this for these, like, newer Mattel figures. But, really quick, I just want to say, the packaging? This looks great. I abs- like, this is Kenner level of, like, quality. I love how this looks. Like, because you have, like, the fence in the background and all the foliage and, like, the sunset. Everything here looks great, and I absolutely love this. You know, this looks incredible. Very Kenner-like. Um... I will say this, though, um, to be completely honest, I do like this a little more than the original Kenner Jurassic Park packaging. I know that's kind of controversial, but I'm sorry, this just looks a little nicer. Uh, that packaging still looks great, but this just looks a little nicer, I'm not gonna lie. So, yeah. Um, the back, I mean, the back's pretty generic, you just have the figures and... Yeah, nothing interesting is really going on here, but the front here, this looks incredible, and I absolutely love this. In fact, when I got these figures, I was debating on whether I should take them out of the box or not, and then I noticed one thing, and then I realized that, yeah, I feel like I should. And what that was, was pretty much uh, this right here. You know, for the most part, it's fine, but we kind of have Blue and Owen here, and as I mentioned in the past, I really do not like these two at all. So, yeah. And I get why they're there. They're there, you know, to, like, for marketing. That makes sense. I get that. But, like, I just feel like if they weren't there, maybe, like, you know, maybe just have, like, you know, like, Rexy or something. Or even, you know, like, Blue. Like, I would have been fine with, like, Blue. But Owen, like, it kind of takes away from it. Or nothing at all would work, too. But, you know, like, these two just kind of take away from it. But ignoring them... This looks great, and I absolutely love this. So, yeah. In fact, I actually like this more than the figures themselves, which is kind of funny, but, yeah. Also, one thing I'm going to miss from the Dino Rivals line, um, there are no more collector's cards. So, yeah. Um, even though they were generic and they could have gone a long way, they're done. They're not doing that anymore, which is honestly kind of a shame. So, yeah. Anyway, for the Ornithalusties itself... So, first, we'll take a look at the painting here. And the painting on this figure is actually very nice. I really do like the painting here. Uh, most of the body is this brownish color. And, of course, on the back of the head here, and on the back and back of the tail and on the side of the legs, we do get this um, almost like a whitish-yellowish color, which actually does look nice. I really do like the patterning going on here. Uh, going to the head here, we can see that there's a little bit of orange in the face there. And the eyes are painted green with black pupils, which do look nice. Uh, the teeth are painted a bonish white color, which is a little sloppy. And the tongue and the uh, membranes on the side of the uh, mouth right there, as you can see. Well, I don't know if you can see or not, but those are painted pink. However, the roof of the mouth is not painted whatsoever, which is kind of a shame. The underside of the figure is this uh, almost like a bluish grayish color, which looks nice. And we do have the scan code here. And just like with most of the Mattel figures, the toenails and fingernails are not painted, which, again, it's upsetting, but it's Mattel. I'm used to that at this point, so, yeah. And that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Um, it's not perfect. There are some minor things they could have touched up a little more, but overall, the painting on this figure is very good for what it is. So the painting, I'd say, gets a pass. I really like the colors here, so, yeah. Anyway, now we'll take a look at the articulation, and the articulation on this figure, I'd say, is basic. It's a it's an attack pack figure, so again, the articulation it's you know pretty basic. So, yeah. Anyway, the mouth can open and close like so, and at the base of the neck, 
it can move upwards and downwards like so. The forelimbs can move 360, though you do kind of have to kind of like stress the plastic a little to do that, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. And the hind limbs can move 360 as well. The tail can twist 360. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah, uh, the articulation on this figure, it's pretty basic, uh, nothing really crazy, but for what it is, it's not terrible. So, the articulation on this figure, I'd say gets a pass. Now I'll take a look at the sculpt, and the sculpting on this figure it looks pretty good for the most part. I guess my biggest complaint would be the head. I feel like it looks a little too cartoonish. Uh, the teeth, uh, they kind of look like something right out of The Simpsons, as I said with the Roarvor's Allosaurus. And something about the overall face just kind of reminds me of something you'd see in Toe Jam and Earl 2, Panic on Funkatron. But, yeah, the face, it's not awful, but it does look a little doopy. And one, another minor nitpick I have, the feet are big, which I guess is understandable to make the figure stand well, but I don't know, I just feel like, you know, there are other ways to kind of, like, remedy this. The balancing, maybe, like, make the tails a little longer and just have the feet, like, regular size, because the feet here, they don't look awful compared to other, um, Mattel figures, but I will say this, that the feet here are definitely a, you know, they're definitely noticeably big. You know, they're not the biggest, but... They're noticeable, so, yeah. Other than that, sculpting on this figure is pretty good. Also, um, I actually forgot to point this out. Uh, listen carefully. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but for some reason there's, like, something, like, in the inside of this. I don't know what it is, but it's in there, so, yeah, I think that's kind of weird. But, yeah, no, uh, that has nothing to do with the sculpting, um... So yeah, the sculpting on this figure is great. I really do like it, despite the head and the feet are, yeah, a little big. Uh, the sculpting on this figure is not terrible, so the sculpting here, I'd say gets passed. Now I'll take a look at the detailing, and the detailing is also very nice. So going to the head here, we can see all the detailing. Everything here looks very nicely detailed. All the little scales and everything look very nice, and yeah, that face does look kind of doopy. But anyway, uh, the creasing in the side of the neck here looks very nice, very well defined. And even on the side of the body here, we have a fair bit of musculature and some nice creasing. Which again, very nicely defined, looks great. The forelimbs here have very nice detailing. All the very like small scales and like the creasing and the musculature, everything here looks great. As well as the hands, they are detailed very nicely as well. The hind legs are detailed very nicely. We have a fair bit of musculature and a lot of creasing, which does look great. And the scaling on the feet here also look very nice. And going with the tail, we have more creasing, which looks very nice. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for the detail on this figure. And the detail on this figure is very nice for what it is. It's not as good as it could be, but for what it is, it's actually very nice. So, the detailing on this figure, I'd say gets a pass. So, at the end of the day, should you get this? Honestly, it's not a terrible figure. In fact, I actually like this figure a lot. It's not a perfect figure, but for what it is, it's not terrible. Uh, in terms of, like, you know, price, it's about 8 bucks, which is honestly not bad at all. You could do a lot worse with that kind of money. So, yeah. Um, if you do get this figure, I'd say it's not the end of the world. If you don't have this figure and you want it, then I'd say go for it. Um, it's not, Again, it's not a perfect figure, but for what it is, it's definitely not bad. So, yeah, I like it a lot. So, yeah. Anyway, if you want to know how big it is, then here it is next to Dr. Billy Grant. And the Ornithalesis, I feel like, is a little too big. Maybe if it was, like, maybe half the size as uh, Billy Grant here, it would work a little more. But overall... I guess, you know, to have it in this attack pack scale, I guess it works, so, yeah. Also, again, uh, some hand sanitizer. Please be safe, please don't be dirty. So, yeah. Anyway, that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace, Zek out.